Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of your favorite show and mine, Live Better, brought to you by the folks over at Wave Video. So glad to have you here with us and glad you came back. Those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. And those who are back, well, we'll welcome you as well. <laughs> I'm excited about today's show, guys. I cannot even begin to tell you. But before I get into that, are you ready for Valentine's Day? You know it's right around the corner. And you like my little heart? Look at that. The team at Wave Video has that available in the templates for your live stream at wave.video. And you can use them right here in the Wave Video Studio when you go live. You don't already have access? That's okay. Go to wave.video and sign up for the beta we are opening it up. People are getting brought in left and right. It won't be long, so make sure you're on the list and ready to go. Not only that, those of you who are as excited as I am about this tool, if you want a chance to win access today, then you want to go to our Facebook page. There's a post with details for the chance to get that. Stickers, our sticker pack. And one lucky winner, $2,500. Yes, that's right. You'll be entered in for a chance to win $2,500. Go to our Facebook page, wave.video, and you'll see the post, and it'll give you all of the instructions. It's a piece of cake. Don't miss out. But Valentine's Day is right upon us, so I thought I'd share just a little moment with you of my first Valentine's Day with my beautiful wife, Lainey. It was before we were married and we were both doing theater. And we decided, I decided I wanted to do something crazy because, well, I'm Chad and that's what I do. And so we were both doing a show at the time. We were in a show called Legally Blonde, the musical. And a buddy of mine that were in the show decided that we were going to reserve the stage after one of the shows. And so we had our girls dress up in their finest outfits and we put on tuxedos and met them center stage after the show had a nice table, a candlelight dinner, and had members of the cast who had volunteered to stay and act as the wait staff and take care of us. We even had uh, cello music playing uh, in the background, and that was uh, courtesy of my son, Hayes. Great memories. Hope you make some as well this Valentine's Day. But right now, let's get to the show. We are here, of course, to learn how to make our live streams everything they possibly can be and more. So what do we want you to do? Well, of course, we want you to make sure that you go to our Facebook page, go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, press the buttons, press everything. Go to our website, sign up for our email newsletter. We'll let you know when we're going live. We'll send you new tips, and you may just get that access you've been looking for to the live beta program to our brand new Wave Video Live Studio. Our guest today is a great friend of mine. I met back in 2018 at a conference where we both were involved with actually shooting video. It was a great day. Jeffrey Fitzgerald, he's a, an Emmy Award winner. I know, we're big time here now. And a live show producer with mad skills and he is going to help us today learn how to make our streams look more like tv i don't know about you but i am super stoked about that so make sure that you're commenting that you're engaging because of course at the end of the show two lucky winners will get our super sticker pack which features what that's right the coveted yellow chad sticker <laughs> and our grand prize winner today is also going to get one of our brand new Yellow Chad coffee mugs. This is an old design. There's a new design coming out. I'll try to share that with you a little bit later. But if you want to win the mug, make sure you comment hashtag Yellow Chad uh, throughout the show today. Keep engaging with us for a chance to win. But without further ado, let's get Jeffrey in here and learn together how to live better. <music> There he is, the man, the hello, myth, hello, the legend. Are you are you are you frozen up on me over there, or is it just me? I don't believe so. I'm seeing it looks like it's working fairly good. Fair enough. You know how you know how it is on lives, right? Everybody <laughs> yes. sees everybody sees something different. <laughs> Usually, that's the case. You know, you 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 and I were just talking about this a minute ago. You know, it can be 
an hour a day a week before a show you set everything up you get all your stuff where you think it is and then all of a sudden it's like oh where'd the audio go exactly. you know and it's one of these it's one of these wonderful things that no matter what you do in streaming especially that um there's always a chance for something fun to happen live which is the whole point of doing live right Yes, it's it's an adventure. That's the, and now you're unfrozen, and now now you now you uh, <laughs> look animated and alive. So uh, I look like Max Headroom from 1980, right? That's yeah. Well, man, it, who here remembers that? How many people here in our audience are old enough to remember Max Headroom? Was that was that Coke or Pepsi that did that? I think it was MTV, but he was doing I think Coke, uh, Coke ads, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Somebody here will correct us. Right. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, it's good to have you here, brother. And uh, hey, man, it's always always good to hang out with you. I know. And I, I you're going to be in San Diego this year, right? I am actually booked. Believe it or not, the last 2018 when I went where I, I met you, I made the decision to go a day early, which is not the best when you're thinking about uh, cost effective prices and things like that. At that time, I'd been kind of hemming and hauling about it. I had a lot going on. And uh, the night before, Mike Russell, the great audio uh, extraordinaire uh, that uh, is Mike Russell, who does a lot with Adobe now and things like that, uh, was doing a live stream from the beach. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to go tomorrow. And I uh, walked in. I was a little bit late. It was 11, 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm looking around to my right. And then I turn left. And there is Owen Video standing next to me, who is somebody I had really felt like I wanted to meet to begin with. And you were uh, tagging along with them. And all of a sudden I became kind of a third wheel and a, in a kind of a, a mob <laughs> heist or something like that. It was a great day. So a, a third wheel. That's hilarious. No, it was great to have you there. I mean, you were helping us get some B roll with your phone. Um, if I remember correctly, right. You were using your phone shooting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys had gear too. So we were swapping things around, but it was a good day all the way around. So, well, you know, I'll tell you for that, that was a big moment for me because I shoot a lot of my client video and a lot of things that I do now with my phone. And it was seeing somebody had with your experience doing what you've done saying, it's okay. I'm using my phone. That oh made me goodness. think, wow, you know what? Let me look into that uh, a little bit well, more. Well, you know, it's funny, Chad, because you fast forward now four years and you look at the quality of the phones. You know, I've got the, the uh, 13 uh, pro from iPhone and, it is absolutely phenomenally unbelievable. Uh, you know, you'll take a better photo with your phone than you will a big DSLR because, as my good friend Lee Love says, uh, uh, that it removes the technology. You're not pushing knobs and buttons and losing your creative uh, view of what you're looking at. And the phone has become incredible. The dilemma with it is, is that when you when you have something with that technology, 4K video and it's robust, HDR and all these things, what is it about it that when you go and put your video together or your live stream together, uh, what is it about it when you have all that technology, but it still seems loose or disjointed or not quite like quote unquote TV? Uh, and I want to say something here at the onset. I am not an advocate that we need to return to the 1950s and and the one way uh, version of television. And it's the Walter Cronkite. And, you know, it's just very stoic and it needs to look like local news and things like that. TV is is evolving to begin with. It has moved a lot closer to social and it's going to continue to do that. The, the difference is, though, when you have that technology and the TV station has technology and you go, OK, they both are pretty decent know how to use them. What is it about it that is is disjointed? What is it that's not connecting where you're having an issue and, and maybe they're not? And we'll go over some of those things today, but I'll, I'll give you a hint. It is definitely not the technology that's the issue. <laughs> well, let's 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 roll back a little bit, actually, maybe not all the way to the 1950s, but we'll, we'll... Tell us a little bit about just your experience in television and how you kind of got into the, the live streaming game as it is today. Well, that's a wonderful, a wonderful question. I'm not going to bore everybody, but my mom was a, a pioneer in, in D.C. television. She was a, a TV producer and uh, I grew up uh, really a, a fanatic about photography and, and quickly uh, latched onto her and began working with her at a very young age. You know, I remember being in studios with these deep political discussions and I'm up on a ladder taking photos and hoping I don't fall off with my little C-110, you know, Instamatic or things. And um, and so I, I was blessed to have experience from somebody that I could see what that world looked like. But you fast forward now 40 years, that world is now completely outdated, but the fundamentals are still in place, which are 
you know, making sure you're telling a, you know, a really strong story and, and having uh, the, the ability to um, craft it in a way where people can absorb it in a little amount of time, right? Because someone has eight hours to hear your, your whole story. So I grew up in around television, uh, but I had made a choice other than working with her in the late 1980s. I was a beta cam operator shooting her PSAs for some of her national projects. And I just made a choice uh, that, you know, I was going to kind of stay out of the TV stations because to me, they seemed hectic and Lo and behold, 1994 rolls around and um, the World Wide Web hits and I just freaked out about it. And I actually went into the web for 11 years uh, professionally doing writing flash players and, and a lot of scripting and a lot wow. of web stuff and things like that. But I never left video because every time somebody would find out about it, it's like, oh, can you build a, a, a university for our company and, you know, training university and these things. And so. Always stayed with it. I started a, a, an internet radio station in 1999 uh, with the thought that I could reach the world from my basement and I uh, <laughs> spent a lot of money and it was really cool. I've got photos of it somewhere. Um, had three viewers like everybody, you know, listeners like everybody else. And uh, it was really a blast. And so, you know, through all that time, you know, I'd worked, uh, you know, in different vocations in corporate America, um, speeding it up. I uh, worked uh, for a number of years for uh, cardiology association. And then in 2010 became senior producer of a biotech healthcare show and on the CBS affiliate in Washington, uh, called uh, BioCentury this week, which, a, which was a really cool program, bringing together patients, advocates, uh, science, all the, the things we have today, where I think what we were doing then was really even more valuable today because nobody's talking today. There's no dialogue anymore. Everybody decides their opinion and then they're just mad. Nobody else agrees with it rather than being seekers of truth. And trying to figure out where these things really lie and understanding the different perspectives may glean some level of maybe something you hadn't heard yet. So it was a it was a great time doing broadcast and uh, five year run, 224 shows. And after that, I was like, I'm going to go back to wanting to you know, do what I've always wanted to do, work for myself. <laughs> and um, these days I do a lot in the fire rescue world. I do volunteer marketing through a sub brand called Fire Media TV. And that's where. A lot of the work has been recognized. The, the uh, four nominations and two Emmys in 2020 came from a, a statewide PSA campaign for North Carolina. I've just released one for Virginia. Uh, I've done a national PSA campaign this year for wildfires. And make sure you guys keep your stuff from burning down the neighborhoods if you're near wildfire uh, uh, areas that are, you know, certainly uh, certainly easier to burn. And um, and so, you know, I've really I found a newfound love. Uh, I've been in the fire system for 20 years. I am absolutely not a firefighter, never been operational. But for my friends who are in social media, you all who are watching, those of you who um, are great photographers, you like doing video. There's a place for you in your volunteer fire department because we need the stories of our heroes told. And the volunteers, believe it or not, are really not that great at doing it because they have day jobs that don't do these things that we do. So. Um, that's kind of a real quick synopsis of, of what I've been all about. And, uh, you know, these days, you know, you and I uh, obviously know I've got a, a private Facebook group for content creators, uh, positive, uh, you know, trying to support people called the Digital Green Room uh, TV and things like that. And uh, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of things that I really like. And uh, um, just, you know, I feel like that, that all the bumps and bruises and guardrails that I've beat up over the course of this uh, journey. Hopefully they help somebody else stay on the, stay on the right side of the lane and all the good stuff. Wow. So, okay. So let's, let's take advantage of this experience you have with, with TV and Emmys and all of this and whatnot. Um, and why is live streaming like television, making it look like TV? Why, what's the advantage of that? Well, you know what I would actually, and I would really be myself interested in what the people who watch this think about that, right? Because there's a, there, there is absolutely, absolute truth that it is not required. Uh, it really depends. Number one, we all know that, that in live streaming, uh, in social circles to begin with, that your content has to be first. I mean, that's the case in broadcast, just as it is in television. All the fancy things we talk about uh, and these other tips are really revolving around you've got to have something great to share to begin with. That That's number one. And you can be on your iPhone in the middle of a cluttered dining room. But if you're telling a story that is compelling about how you overcame a horrible disease, and you got through it, and now you're starting the new chapter of your life, people are going to watch that and love it and applaud and appreciate it. So it's not about the graphics. It's not about all these other things. But there are people that recognize that when they pop into a Zoom meeting uh, with their camera and it's kind of disjointed and cluttered and, and the, you know there's darkness, the shadows because the light's not in the right spot and all this, and somebody pops in that looks like you right now, which looks freaking stellar, 
Well, not, uh, not, not according to J.S. Gilbert here. He's asked if there's a trick so Chad could look more intelligent when live streaming. <laughs> well, there, there's a cereal for that we'll reveal here in the next couple of weeks. I'll do a cereal box in 3D. Um, but but the thing is, uh, it, you know, when you look, when you pop in, like one of the things I can tell you if you're in the business of uh, trying to sell your skills and services on social, nothing has worked better for me than having the look that I have now. And it's not always this green screen with the news background. I can make it look more moody and things with different colors. But when you pop into a, to a group like that and every other person looks like everybody else mm. and you look a little different, you immediately get into credibility because the, okay, nonverbal, this person mu must know something, you know, there's something there. And then when you back it up with, you're able to tell, uh, you know, tell some things that maybe will help move that needle forward in a conversation wherever you're at, that's always a good thing. So, um, you don't have to do these things, but no doubt people resonate with what they have been fed for 40, 50 years. We no, know that how makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, was, is there, is there, and I'm curious about the audience as well. Um, audience members, let us know if there's a, if your live stream could look like any TV show, like your favorite TV, if you could make your live stream look like any specific TV show, what would it be? But for, for you, Jeff, is there, is there a, are there shows or, or live streams or things that have inspired you and, and have kind of helped shape the look you wanted? Well, you know, I'm a, I, I, I don't do a lot of YouTube as of yet. And I'm just now in the last couple of weeks releasing a, a whole new YouTube channel with um, a show that I've, I've been doing, uh, you know, interviewing different live streamers and creatives and things like that. And so I'm a newbie with uh, YouTube, which is why I'm going to the conference. I want to learn from all the, the people there that can teach me and help me get over the, the hurdles. Um, but I, I'm I'm a big fan of Sean Cannell. I think that he's really got a, a knack for being able to to explain things very clearly, and at the same time keep the videos creative and keep them short. Um, one of the things that that I think really single biggest thing I think I see across the board, especially with podcasts and even in the world of live streaming, is that you're going to see people that are like Chad, you're with me today. You know that's a great hat. My my grandma had a hat. And it's now 25 minutes later before they get to the first question. And sure. it's, I call it kind of the NPR mode. It's like, <laughs> would you have chosen the path of the iPhone camera had the pixel come out three months later, right? And it's, and it's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's a very slow moving conversation. Difference between TV and these are some of the things we'll, you know, we can pop up as we go, or even we can come back to them. One of the big things about TV is that they're very intentional about what they're telling you. And they know that they've got a two minute block, a three minute block, um, and they got to, they got to communicate that story out there. And so it's one of these, these things where you're better off if you come and approach your live stream with intentionality, with the idea that, Hey, I've got Chad on here today. He's got a great story about overcoming this particular, um, hurdle in his life. Not only are we going to talk about the who, what, when, where, and why the basics of that story, but Ch you know, Chad, how did you feel going through it? What were you thinking in that moment where you didn't think you were able, you were even going to be able to get out of bed? But now you're, you know, you're, you're at the top of this mountain. And now that you're at the top of this mountain, how many more mountains are you going to be able to climb? What will you learn? What will you tell other people, right? So being able to, to be very focused and being able to keep the people you're talking to from going off on all these tangents as a host is also an incredibly important skill to have as well. But it's the intentionality, really, that trumps any of the, the, the 4K video and, and, and things like that. It's really knowing how to package something in a very concise way where people can get it. Because Chad, I mean, I know that we know every one of the beautiful people who are watching right now have stopped everything they're doing. And, you know, they, they've, you know, they're laying in a hammock with the, you know, the big <laughs> 65 inch with us on there outside. And that's all they're doing. Right. Absolutely. You know, as well as I do, JS is cramming popcorn in and he's got, you know, uh, prices right on with the remote over here. And he's well, he said he, he, he said that he'd like his co-host to look like Barbara Eden from my dream of genie. So, you know what? That might be a really, really good show for you. And I think there might be a way to do that through the power of AI. Um, oh, my goodness. I'd watch that. Oh, that would be amazing, right? But JS but, Dreams but, of Genie. <laughs> I Dreams of Genie. That, is, that's, that has to be done now. That has to be done. We're going to have to do that on the new network. So, But, but uh, you know, the, the big takeaway really is that it's not about the technology. That's not what makes something look like TV. It's really understanding that people have been bred to ingest news a certain way. It's, it's in sound bites. It's in topical things. It's, a, it's keeping in a very focused direction. And I think the more you can do that in your live stream, the better off you'll be. It'll make you a better, certainly a better interviewer as you're able to navigate that and help people redirect them and keep their story as powerful as it, it, it can be. 
Okay. So we've so we've got the the content, we've got the you know the style and the the, the sound bites and all these small pieces, but still as a live streamer, you've 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 got that component, right? You've got to either be able to interview or you've got to be able to tell a story or you've got to be able to look at a camera and, you know, make love to it because that's the person and everybody is convinced that you're talking right at them and directly to them. You bet. But there's also the tech pieces of it. And that's another part of this though, making it look like TV that people do struggle with. Is there special gear or is there, you know, a starter pack of gear um, that you would suggest people make sure, hey, have these components at least if you really want to have something that looks Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, and I, I mean, obviously, you know, great lighting is this differentiator. If you have decent lighting, um, that really sets the tone for everything else. And the wonderful thing about Amazon is that there are so many great products out there. I never in a billion years thought I would get to the point where I would be buying what I used to call it's just consumer grade stuff. I, you know, I will never get near it. And now, you know, I'm a different breed. I got a whole different reason for doing what I do, but I've got probably 12 of these newer N E E W E R LED square lights that do color because I love, you know, everybody knows me knows. I just, I, I don't like bland. I love color. And, um, and I can, so I can control them with Bluetooth and I can make the the studio, the more I can sit down and look, moody or uh, look a little more bright or cool or warm or whatever with it and and i think the lighting is really where that starts right i mean the fundamentals is you got to be in focus you you have to be able to be heard um you may hear one of my three dogs which i i hope are still put away but you want to make <laughs> sure you put your your dogs away and you want to make sure that they're you know your phone's on silent and all those kind of things for distractions but but really uh, the, the technology is is good lighting great sound and being in focus but here's the other thing you'd made i loved it when you said something about make love, make love to the camera this is something i've done before and i'll probably get my my chair hooked here where i could get back on my pad but if i'm back here way way back here and maybe i'm way back like this and i'm like hey <laughs> everybody I want you guys to really just understand you're special right but when you really get close even and i do this intentionally sometimes i'll actually instead of me moving forward i'll lean back in my chair almost like you're sitting with your elbows on your knees and now when you look at someone and you say, listen, I want you to understand that you truly have intrinsic value. God doesn't make mistakes. And you're somebody who can do the hard thing that you think you can't. And the reason why you don't think you can is because you haven't met that person who will do it with you, that journey, because every TV station has a team. You can begin to see how much more powerful it is. And here's why. Because nobody thinks about, you know, they, they don't think about what we call real estate, screen real estate. Sure. They'll, they, you know, when you, when, you'll see this all the time. Somebody will take a, a photo, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, Hey, I met Drake. I got a photo of him and it's you and this other dude. And it's like half of the Walmart in the, you know, in the photo, it, the ratio Drake is the was more, at Walmart. Right. Well, because, of course. Yeah. And, um, and, and the thing is though, but the more you fill the screen with what's important, and remove less of the things that don't matter, the more powerful that story is going to become. So that by moving in a little bit, by being able to to speak, and and the other thing is, you know, I don't know if anybody notices or even cares, uh, but I just naturally gotten to the point where I can literally be thinking about a million different things, and I'm still looking at the camera pretty much all the time, because it's just a point of focus. Because right now I've got a monitor down here, and I can look here, and there's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. There's no rule that says you can't look around. Don't ever think that, but you do see the difference between when I'm doing this to when I'm doing this, because that's where we connect with. Right. And so these are, these are more human things like that, but technology, great lighting, um, picking a camera that works for you. I'm a big fan of the Logitech Brio. It's a 4k, uh, camera. It's about $200. And, um, if you don't have money to buy a DSLR and some of the fancier stuff, and, and by the way, sometimes those things are, are, um, not the right answer because they work against you. If you don't know how to use them, you're basically buying a six month journey to getting good at it. And if you want to start live streaming Thursday, buy the Brio, plug it in, set it, accept what it looks like, even if it's not perfect, but get good at that, get stable with that. And then begin doing the thing that matters more, which is it's not about the technology. Share the the, the cool you through that uh, to the world get that following going and then down the road you'll probably find a couple people who can help navigate you and help t- you know say hey have you ever tried this or tried that and, and and you grow into it organically i think sometimes we really think we've got to be well i know this you know this as well as i do we're in an, an era where everybody 
nobody wants to be the the, the student. Everybody wants to be the coach right off the bat. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and um, there was a there was a young man on Blab who was 23 years old that I remember was a life coach, and that's all I will say. And I thought that was very indicative of the time. You know, we're in a we're in a moment where we don't want to we don't want to wait for the seeds to grow, but those seeds that we plant in our live streams or in these things that we do that are important to us take time to grow. And man, I, I can tell you, I've been waiting for years on some of these things, and they're still not where I want them to be, but they're growing, and that's what's important. Uh, Lyle was uh, making a mention. He said, in other words, have less background in the shot, have a tight shot. And, and he, he struggled with wanting to have the perfect background. And, and everybody does that. They're like, I, oh, I've just got the new Sony, blah, blah, blah. And it's giving me this nice, you know, blurred effect in my background. Or look at my new set. And I got this or this, this. And it's like we they, we spend so much time on those things. And we, we and less time, like, well, what, what, what about your face? Have you done anything about that recently? Or, you know. Well, you know, Lyle, there is one other option. You know, uh, you can do what I do. You just keep eating the Chick-fil-A and at some point you won't have to worry about the background. You will take up the, in, the entire space. That's such a great point, right? Because we, we all, we, we think we overthink the things that are like, when you really, really dig down, you know, it, it doesn't matter as much as we think we do. I love this, uh, Chad. Yeah, no, that's true. Just, I don't know. Maybe you know who said this. I, th I think it's a famous saying, but I've never f figured out who said it. And it was, I used to worry about what people thought of me until one day I realized they just never did. Oh, and, man. and it sounds drab and almost like harsh, but the reality is give people something to remember you with. And, and that's the goal of a live stream. It's not to, you know, we, you, I'm going to slow down here. <laughs> we think we're communicating with our news about mask mandates or about these other issues that are extremely important in our country. But what we have is everybody's got a microphone. Nobody has a headphone. Nobody yeah. wants to hear anything. Right. So, Brilliant. Don't make the mistake of thinking that because you put something out to the world that the world's going to hear it. No, it, it the communication is actually when you know it's been absorbed with someone else and you've seen some feedback from that, right? So that's the goal. It's not just I'm putting that out there. But you're you're right about that. Put put something out there that people want want to hear that inspires them, that encourages them, that they know that they're better for it. And don't worry about whether or not you think you're a Sean Cannell, like I'll never be, or any of these other guys. Pete McKinnon's a incredible cinematographer uh some of these people but the thing is we're not we're, we're not on a totem pole totem poles don't exist in this day and age like that we're a radio station and, and if i'm jeff 107.5 and chad you know you're 99.5 southern rock you know or detective radio whatever it is with the 1940s you know that you like that that whole macabre you know guys and dolls maybe it's broadway um People will resonate with that radio station because every radio station that's ever been put on the face of the earth has had a following, no matter how good or bad. But they get better when they have more people. You know, speaking of, of people um, and, and listening, um, Lyle, I believe it was Lyle. No, no, no. Um, Humane Canada probably not the name on their birth certificate. But they, uh, <laughs> they asked, when, when you're live streaming with a guest, do you look at the camera or do you look at your guest? That would depend if we're in a two shot like this, this looks a lot better than me looking like this, right? It, it doesn't work. Now in my green room, I experimented last year. I'm actually, because of the technology we use, there's protocols now called SRT, which can put a broadcast quality signal across the internet with green screen. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm working at wanting to do a show where it looks like I'm sitting in the same room the way Obama and Oprah did. Uh, which I know is entirely possible. You just got to match sure. the lighting and you, both sides have to really work at it to make it look. But I think that kind of thing would be cool to be looking off camera and, and, and that kind of thing. But again, it's, it's, you know, it's really your eyes to think of your eyes as where you want the, the focus of your power. Right. So if I'm looking at Chad, I'm looking at you really, because I want you to know that I'm, I'm really thinking about you right now, but when I'm looking at the camera, it's about everybody. And so sometimes if I'm doing an interview and I've got people next to me, I'll be talking to them like this, but I'm always bringing you into the conversation. Right. Looking at it, it's like, it's like, Hey, I want you to hear this is, this guy's really awesome. He's a great EMT. He's a great example of why you could be one as well. You might not ever think you could, but you really can. Right. And, and I think those are some of the things that when you non nonverbal communication is everything in our world, that and knowing your why. Right. So when you have those two things, that's like the dynamic duo is that, you know, who you are and what your why is and what you want to communicate. And then you bring people into that conversation and that All works right. amazingly well. 
Real quick, guys, just want to remind you, uh, you know, if you've got questions for Jeff, this is the time. He's a, he's, he's a, a tech guy. He's a, he, he's done this. He's an on-camera guy. So if you've got questions, he's got the experience. So I'm drop a your Chick questions. Gold member. A little, he's a Chick-fil-A gold member. I mean, does it get much better than that? Um, so if you've got, got questions, I'm going to go back to one here in just a second. It's not maybe sure. so much about looking like TV, but it is a tech question uh, that somebody had I think you might be able to help with. Um, also want to remind you guys, we will have three winners at the end of the show to get the Wave Those Video are awesome. sticker pack. Yes, the coveted yellow Chad and the grand prize winner, of course, will get one of our new mugs, Wave Video Live. That's better. awesome mugs yeah i didn't never thought in my lifetime i'd become a sticker um <laughs> but uh our, our winners will come from those who are uh asking questions engaging and if you want to be up for a yellow chad mug make sure that you comment hashtag yellow chad for a chance to win that and we've got a lot going on today so just remember also go to the facebook page we have a post there there's a link in the comments as well that you can click um, it gives you some instructions for a chance to win $2,500, access to the live beta uh, that we have going on right now. So you'll have access to this, this studio that we're using. Um, and uh, we're also going to throw some stickers your way there as well in case you don't win today because, you know, we want you to have some stickers. So all of that going. Um, one, uh, <laughs> we love the Chad. Thanks, Jim. Glad you're here. <laughs> you hashtag yellow Chad. Um, Someone was talking earlier, we were talking about shooting video with the phone. Okay. And this maybe isn't so much on, on the specific topic, but it's a good no, question. It's, I think it's people have more than, yeah. Um, is they were struggling, I think, with having the audio sync when they're using their phone to go live. I, I assume mm. what they're doing is they're using their phone, bringing it into their computer. So maybe with like an NDI tech or something, but they have audio coming from a different place. That that's what I was thinking, because, the, the you know, the thing about recording on an iPhone is that the, the video is what's called VBR. There, there's two types of ways videos are put together uh, back in the day. You know, you, you, you know, one second of video traditionally was 30 frames, 30 pictures would create one second of video. And when you would save a file, it would save 30 different pictures over that one second. They were all full streaming. The way it gets around this is it keeps that quality looking good is by if i'm sitting like this and my hand is only doing this what happens is it does a keyframe at like frame one or ten or whatever and then later on it will put another full picture in there but in between it's only going to put little pixels over top of where my hand moved and to you it looks just like things are normal like right now this is what it looks like with us but these are not full pictures right so the things that don't change stay the same to lower the bandwidth um so the, 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 there's what's known as a constant bitrate, which is a constant set of of um, uh, the bandwidth or variable, which means when it needs more uh, to do more with all the pixel movements, it will raise that up a little bit or lower it and things. Without it getting too technical, VBR sometimes can be really hard on sync because it, it can slow up and start up and then the audio is kind of out of sync and things like that. Um, if it was a recording and you're trying to use it and you had that problem, I was going to say, what I do many times is re-encode that video into a constant bit rate from an iPhone, and that'll usually fix the problem. And then if it's still off, at least it's off the same, because sometimes you'll have one that's off a little bit, but then over here it's off even more. But if it's pretty much the same, you can put it in an edit program and slot them back together and resave it and make it work. But if you're using an iPhone for for something like that and it's, it's having an issue there, I would think, number one, maybe Wi-Fi. Are you on a decent connection? Uh, where there's the, the bandwidth is strong enough to carry that signal and do what you want there is the product you're using good enough is it is it you know because there's everything on you know the iphone there's a million different apps that do different things some of them work better than others so maybe try some different uh, apps uh, different technology and see if there's any difference there and then just to be honest with you it may be something where you might be at a place where Maybe getting that Brio, maybe getting a Logitech C920, something to start with, maybe giving you something that removes that part of the equation. Because if that's a holdup, you're not getting your your message to the world out, right? And so if it's if it's a holdup and it could be fixed for $75 or you know, $200, maybe that's an answer too. So oh wow. JS Gilbert says uh he's overweight. Is his VBR going to use more pixels? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Fusion, Jet, our Fusion Marketing, our, our friend Jim says that Chad looks so serious. If I do look serious today, folks, it's because uh, our it looks like COVID has kind of struck our team a little hard mm -hmm. today. So I'm uh, doing the hosting and I'm also trying to uh, produce today as well. So our producer was 
uh, sick. So um, if that, <laughs> because you guys are engaging so much and so I'm looking at what's going on. And so then I forget, oh, wait, smile while you do it. <laughs> no, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, um, some Someone was asking if there's a way to block incoming calls while they live stream on their phone. Oh boy. Um, the, uh, what is it? It's the, I don't, the airplane mode is one of the things that yeah. I think that cuts off the whole Wi-Fi and things like that. I, I, you know, what I will do is I will find an answer from, I'll ask that in my group and see if anyone has any answers. I don't myself use the iPhone for a lot of live streaming outside of doing like Facebook live or something like that in All a right. moment. Um, but, um, that's a great yeah. question because that, that can be really, that's a big problem. I believe you, if you go to airplane mode, you can then turn the Wi-Fi back on and only have the Wi-Fi I was Wi wondering on. about that. I thought there yeah. was a way to do um, that. In, okay. fact, in fact, when you, when you shoot video, um, if you're using the audio into the camera or that's if you're awesome. going live directly from your phone and using audio from the, the phone, um, you want to do airplane mode and then only use Wi-Fi if you can, because you'll get kind of a feedback sound from the, the yeah, cell, yeah. cell signal. Um, and then you should be able to turn on the uh, do not disturb um, mode. That's awesome. Well, no, that, I learned something that I mean, that's that's exactly so, the, the way to keep uh, grandma out of your live stream. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, lots of great tips here. Yeah, I'm just looking too. <laughs> How's that possible? Uh, um, so let's let me ask you this one. As far as getting the show together, so I've got my TV idea and I'm looking good and my equipment, I'm ready to go. But how do you recommend people go about preparing a script? Do I need a script? How, how do I get the flow ready to to make it happen? And or and do I need to rehearse before I do I, it? I'll tell you, you know, I'm already making jokes about food. I try not, I'm actually trying to lose weight, but you, I, I look at it like a great chef. If you know how to cook, you probably don't need a script the way a recipe, the way somebody else would need it. If you are um, trying to do something experimental, you know, having a guide, I think is the way to do it. I never write out word for word scripts uh, for 99% of what I do. Every now and then I'll put something in a prompter. If I really want to make sure I, I nail something that's, that's specific um, but at the same time, um, if you know, by and large, the, you know, the, the guest, you, you've done a pre-interview with them and you're careful not to ask the same questions to say, you know, two days later where they don't have any energy to them, ask different questions, but learn enough about them to know who they are and what they're all about. Um, those kind of things can help. But what I would do is have a bullet point, a show rundown. So you've got your teaser, the first five seconds, Hey, coming up today, we're going to show fedoras on the next, you know, live, uh, live better. You know, and then it's got the open for 10 seconds. And then the first 30 seconds might be you saying hi to people. Um, by the way, what I would not do is take 45 minutes saying hi to people while people log in because you don't you can't think of anything better to do. Right. That's a sign that you're not being intentional. And I'll tell you, 20 years ago, I saw Shania Twain with my wife and she would stop the concert every three songs to take photos with people way in the back and have them walk down to take photos with her. And it was literally like 15 minutes in between songs. Same feeling comes when you do that kind of thing. So maybe it's your open, 30 seconds of saying, hey, then it's, it's, you know, tell people what to expect because remember the attention spans are shrinking dramatically. Hey, on this show, you're gonna learn how to take not just your technology to a higher place, but you're gonna be able to take your message to a place where it's actually being heard and listened and you listen to, and you're gonna be able to, to get feedback on that and create new conversations and things. So I would say, that um, that that a rundown and it could be a, an Evernote or an Apple Notes with just bullet points, and that's all you need. But you need something that in a in a pinch you can look at it real quick and know where you are in the interview and have some default go to questions that you you may not plan on asking, because even in this interview we talk and we 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 want it, we say we want to go in a direction but it always changes, and now you're kind of at that that crossroads like Tom Hanks was in uh, Castaway. Don't know which way to go and there's no no energy. You have something to go to. Hey, well, tell me about the time that, you know, you threw the, the phone off the uh, this or that, you know, that kind of thing. And, and you know, you find a way to, to keep the ball rolling, keep the energy up. Wow. Uh, Kate was asking you that you, know, you talked about things packing in the blocks. Are there specific types of blocks that you recommend, especially if you just have like one guest like we do? Well, you know, I can I, I can tell you this. Um, and Ted, if you want me to, I'm going to let me turn the, the audio down here. I'll play a little bit of this show that I do uh, that I just started season two on uh, in the, the green room here. And yeah, sure. uh, make sure I'm doing my live thing like I'm there you go. So let me uh, this, I think, has a remember this version may have uh, open right in the front of it here. So I'll turn this up so everybody can hear just a little bit here. 
So I'm doing something very different with my live stream, right? I don't expect very many people to do this kind of thing. For me, I did last year, I did a bunch of testing of this show called Profiles, right? And the idea here was people that I know in creative circles, live stream circles, that I think have a wealth of information to share with the world, I want them to know that that, that information is valuable. And so I want to interview them and bring it out of them. Last year, I did it very much like a, a typical live stream. I had a, a virtual background and things like that. But this year for me, only because it's my style, I wanted to go a little bit bigger and make it look more like real TV, just because I thought it would be kind of cool to make people feel like they've been on something bigger than maybe they really were. And so it's one of those, I'll come out of the commercial. I have fake commercials in there too. Um, <laughs> but it, but it's one of these things that that I think for your 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 question, going to the blocks, what I do is I break it up between the early years. Uh, you know, I, I do a story up front, like I'll do a little one minute, uh, one and a half minute story about them like you'd see on 60 Minutes, you know, setting it up. You know, Lee Love is an accomplished photographer, but he's far more than that, you know, those things. Mm -hmm. But I, I start with the early years, then I'll get into highs and lows, like, you know, parts of your journey that that you, you, you know, for me, I'm really big about being deeper. I know I sound like Dr. Phil to a lot of people, but I, I really feel like that, especially with COVID, that we we all have hit these deep lows and it doesn't mean we stay there, right? So it's like, well, how did you get through that? What was it about that? You know, uh, where did your faith come into play here? How did you step forward when you didn't think you could? And And so there's these highs and lows in the second segment, then it might be about the big break, you know, uh, what, what was it that opened up the door for you to do the thing that you love? Um, then it's shared some of this knowledge uh, with folks that, that you feel like that maybe people don't understand. And then the, the fourth part for me is the future. Where do you, where do you see live stream going? You know, many people think that it's, that it's going to become almost like an AR, you know, thing with like the metaverse and things like that. But, you know, nobody knows, but that's a great conversation point, a great question. But the segmenting, where that really comes into play, and it's a great question by the, the viewer, is that it helps you know what part of the story you're in when you're sitting here as a host pushing buttons and you're trying to talk and all these things. So if you know it's the early days, it's pretty easy to come up and say, okay, I'm in segment one. Okay, let me ask something here about what was high school like for you. You know, you, um, you know, like the right. gentleman I, I interviewed uh, said he, he ran with the wrong crowd and thought that photo cameras were for nerds. And now he's, you know, 50, 60 years into a, <laughs> a, uh, you know, into a, a vocation where he's photographed the president and everybody in between. So, so it's different for everybody, but segmenting your show out is a really smart thing. But above all of that, the only word you need to really remember is the word intentional. Just be intentional about it and it'll all come together the way you want it to. The, um, it, it's basically like you're taking the hero's journey, you know, it's, yes, absolutely. it's all the components of a, of a story, Yes, but turn, <laughs> turning it into these blocks of a show into an, an interview format, um, which <clears throat> could be difficult on a show that is dealing with a specific topic of how give to me an example. Something. Well, like, like today, right now, ours may be a little bit different, right? Because you've gone through this journey of making your show look through like TV. You've had struggles yep. and you've had things like that. Um, but uh, let's say, you know what? I'm coming up with ideas in my head and every single one of them, I'm immediately going, no, I can make that work. No, I can make that work. Well, <laughs> no, I can I'll, make I'll, that work. <laughs> I'll, tell you the, I'll tell you the difference for the model I'm presenting. I don't separate the person's work from, from who they are. Now, they, they are very different, right? Your vocation doesn't define you. But for me, again, it goes back to like with for, for me, I haven't talked about this stuff for a while, but I mean, like I have a ninth grade education. I didn't finish high school. I had Tourette's uh, that came on uh, right around late sixth grade. And by ninth grade, I was missing 80 days of school a year. And I was still leading my art class and my journalism class. But when high school came along with the magnitude of work that increased, it just wasn't going to work. I was I was trying to stay stiff all the time because I didn't want to get picked on and all that kind of thing. And what happened was it just made me literally physically sick. Wow. But you, you can say something like that. Right. But right. now that's something people can build on. Right. Um, but at the same time, I could also talk about where I was uh, 10 years later, a regular guest speaker on animation and multimedia, at George Washington University's graduate program. And I still don't have to this day to get have the credentials probably to get into community college. Right. So there's these amazing little side paths through things when you're talking about like, well, how did you, you know, what, you know, if you were dealing with that, what made you even think you could try something like this? You know, and so for me, I think that you weave the person and the personality throughout the story where people can really understand that it's not only about this superficial topical thing. You know, if it's if it's four tips to selling better homes, 
um, that has a certain aspect and element to it. You probably don't want to get real deep with people and, you know, hey, real estate person, when was your last emotional breakdown, right? Probably not the best thing to do. But at the same time, you can certainly find that hero's journey in so many things. If somebody's, uh, you know, talking about championing pets, well, pets are, are everybody's, you know, that's our wonder drug. You know, we can we can find a hero's journey with, with a pet, you know, or things along those lines. So, you know, I wow. think that uh, I think there's a lot of ways you can do it. But again, it just depends. Now, everybody by now knows I've never met a microphone I didn't like. So, you know, <laughs> well, I and that's talk, you. So. But, but what about what about other people? So, you know, to get these stories and to get these these uh, types of deals, what kind of research do you typically do ahead of time? You know, especially with the guest you're bringing on, you know, do you let it just flow and let it go or no 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 and I, that's a wonderful question kate um th those are very probing questions if you obviously are going to be great at this if you're not already doing wonderful things um no what i do is um uh, the second guest of my for the season for my show i've got a zoom call tomorrow and we're going to have a conversation i'm going to ask for pictures of back in the day pictures of now things that were accomplishments i'm going to learn a little bit about like and again it doesn't have to be life like you know, like Tourette syndrome or things like that. But, it, you know, it's like, how did you how did you do this? You had a decision. You were going to stay in Canada, but you decided to move to Kansas City. That's just as important. And that's not so deep and things like that. Um, but I, I, I have a conversation enough to really know that they fit, number one, what what my direction of the show is. So I'm, I'm the one that's driving, you know, the Captain Kirk. Uh, sure. and And so I know what that is. So now my job is to fit them into that. And uh, do that research to, to find out from them what what all of that looks like. But then the, the real nuance, which sometimes you get, I hit, sometimes I don't, is you don't want to do the interview on Tuesday when you're going to do it on Thursday. But that one wasn't recorded because it was just you and that person. So you want to make sure you save some of these questions that you think might be real. I don't want to say rolling grenades, but you want people to really come to life on something. It's like, hey, I heard you were a singer or whatever, you know. So I think that what you want to do is you definitely want to research. You got to know your topic. If you're going to get in front of people and speak, whatever it is, you need to know what you're right. talking about on some level, right? And it doesn't mean you have every answer, just like I didn't with the iPhone, right? But somebody else will, which is how Absolutely. that works. But I would definitely think that you know, plan the research into it. And the second part of your question, which was the um, you know, do you do you look at a difference of direction in mind? Yeah, you you definitely need to think like that. When you're writing it out, where could this go? If we're talking about um, a particular topic, where, where where are the hot buttons? And if it could go in any one of those directions, have a little pack, a little lunch in terms of questions and narrative that you can go in if somebody wants to go down a different direction. You know, and again, I'm framing that in a news kind of a centric sense, but right. it really just depends, you know, but you, you can open that up pretty widely. Well, that, that totally makes sense, too. I mean, you know, there's times I've shot video with people. And they're like, well, can we kind of go through whatever you want to ask me first? And I'm like, no, because some of the best moments are the raw moments where you're right. answering something, especially if it goes down an emotional path and you're doing it for the first time. That's I can't right. go back and then and recreate that for you. Yeah, it's, it's totally just something you can do. So, um, wow, Jeff, we I know we didn't like kind of ask all. Yes, well, we covered pretty much everything that we planned on talking about and then some. Oh, yeah. um, but this is what we wanted it to be, right? We wanted it to be this discussion. We wanted to also let the audience engage and, and ask things. Um, but our team at Way Video uh, wanted us to try something new today to just kind of engage with you and have some fun. And they wanted to do this little thing they called this or that. And so um, we are going to try something here. And All right. uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So let me... Uh, Let's do this here. I'm going to, we've got these little questions that are already made and we're just going to ask them to you. So let's see. This is our first time doing this. So bear with me just no, it's a good. I, here. I love it. And uh, all right. So this is it. This is <laughs> I that, love it. Right. <laughs> um, so we're just going to put up a couple answers and you let us know which and somebody's asking. About I love your graphics. Those are own, so cool. Our old show. Um, Let's see. Okay, here's our first one. Ready? Here we go. New clothes or new phone? That would definitely be a new phone. I'm a camera <laughs> fanatic. Anytime the camera improves, I want a new phone. Uh, guys, we want to know what you guys would choose as as well uh, in the comments there. I'm with you. I would go new phone for sure. And let's say I just got the new phone. I guess there's timing involved. All right. Next one. Counter recliner. <laughs> My wife is a recliner type. I'm a couch type. 
And, uh, you know, we, we've had this uh, eternal marital battle about do we try to get we, we were thinking recently of getting two of those like massage chairs. But I don't know if you've ever looked at them, Chad, especially some that come from overseas. They look like some sort of orbital uh, deal that goes to zero gravity. And I don't know that we're going to end up ending up near the SpaceX or something. So <laughs> we're keeping the couch with all the popcorn and coins and all that good stuff. Uh, that's interesting is the answer. We have a lot of people saying uh, new phones. Some saying clothes. We've got a couch. We got somebody saying a human Canada wants the recliner. It's interesting. Everybody's on different sides. Someone said new phone and clothes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now here's this is a, this is a tough one. I, I've struggled with this one. I'm still not sure I know the answer. Pancakes or waffles? Well, I I have tried to stay away from pancakes a lot lately, um, <laughs> but I love pancakes. Um, waffles are are a nice second cousin to pancakes to me, so I'm going to go with pancakes. Yeah, I think, but I, I have I to would, say, sugar-free syrup. Sugar-free syrup. Wow, that, that almost sounds like sacrilegious to me, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, would you rather do dishes or laundry? Oh, totally. Long. I'm a total laundry. I, that I can handle. I do not like dishes. <laughs> so I, I have to pick dishes because I'm not allowed to do laundry. Um, that's kind of the problem I'm facing at the moment with the marital couch person. <laughs> I shrunk. I shrunk one shirt. I don't know, <laughs> seven years ago. And uh, I was uh, forbidden. Well, so. there's a way, listen, there's a way to fix that. Go buy small versions of your Chad coffee cups and put them all in there. And she'll think you did the same thing until you can't do dishes. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So if you want to get out of something, just do it really, really wrong. All right. Last one. Are you a cat guy or dogs? That's the hardest one of all of them because I grew up. Being a cat person, had cats my whole life. I love cats. I wanted a Maine Coon cat. If anybody's ever seen these, they're like 60 pounds and they're just gigantic. Not able to have those. So in 2014, we got our first cockapoo puppy. And I have realized those guys are teddy bears. And we have three of them now. And I could see my wife and I breeding them. They're really the most amazing dogs uh, on earth. I've got one, though, that I'm going to be writing a, a kid's story about called The Fabulous Misadventures of Teddy Confetti because he's nuts and crazy. He's been on our roof. Uh, he's done all kinds of crazy things and their stories, half of them are true. And I think it'll be pretty cool. Wow. Going with Super. the dogs here, dog at the, the underdog. Sounds good. I mean, everybody, it's, it's interesting. Everybody here, somebody said Guinea pigs. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there's that. Um, I, I don't know why, you know, Stephen Kaplan just felt that he was allowed to just come up with his own answers. He doesn't understand the game. It's okay, Stefan. Well, we'll, or we'll, he's we'll... learned something today, Chad, and he's learning how to be intentional about his live stream. Ah, there you go. Very nice. Up, oh, Humane Canada. It's hard for us to say we're the National Animal Welfare Federation. Wow. <laughs> Personally, Natalia said Team Cat. Team Cat. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Natalia, we'll, uh, we'll keep your secret uh, safe. And Kate says cats, but probably because Kate, cat, they, you know, they sound alike. And so I think there's some, uh, and, and JS says that cat, cats taste better. So <laughs> there's, there's a positive note to uh, kind of start to wrap up there on. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for, you know, being our, our guinea that pig. That was great. Here. <laughs> so that was great. Was something fun. And then, of course, everybody loves to throw in everything that they, uh, you bet. Uh, like, and, and uh, the team at Wave says, "Now we, now we know everything about you, dear viewers." That's right. <laughs> That's right. We're data mining your preferences. That's right. Um, if you see a cat in a fedora on a coffee cup, you know what happened to Chad. <laughs> exactly. Uh, watch your back. Watch your back. Let's give That's some right. stuff away. Wow. That was intense. So the the team each week they uh, remake our little transition deals and like our intro, cool. and so because of your background and it wanting to be like TV, they went with this kind of news love it. theme music. And I never listened to them before the show because I want to be surprised as well, just because I'm curious to see. That's cool. <laughs> what really quirky cool. thing they came up with? So anyway, um, guys, of course, every <laughs> grumpy yellow Chad. Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, every week we do a giveaway, um, and this week, of course, our two of our winners are going to get the coveted sticker pack from Away Video. Um, one lucky winner, our grand prize winner, is about to get uh, one of our new mugs. Which, by the way, uh, I got a picture of what I think the new mugs are going to look like. Let me show oh, you. Cool. There wow. you go. 
I know, right? Isn't that crazy? I love it. Team came up with that. Um, super impressed as always. And of course, um, while you're here, guys, make sure that you do go to our channels, uh, like, subscribe, click the bells. If there's something to click, just click it and uh, we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> so uh, it's funny. You know, every, every channel has like their different way to get notifications and you could spend all day going through exactly how to do that. But without further ado, let's see who our lucky winners today are. The winners of the sticker packs are... J.S. Gilbert <laughs> and Dustin Stout. So congrats to them. And then the winner of, I know you're waiting for it, the mug is. You have to have a drum roll, right? You do. That's, is that's, that's, the cat that's, lady, that's... Natalia, <laughs> Humane Canada, uh, and specifically uh, Natalia, unless she wants to give it and share it with uh, the rest of her team there at Humane Canada. So uh, congrats to everyone for that. Um, see if there's any other uh, last minute questions here before we uh, tell you thanks and, and <laughs> lucky me um, and kick you out of here and let you get back to your life. Um, <laughs> well, I will I will I will say that uh, that if if you are somebody <clears throat> who is a live streamer, you're doing a show, you're creative you might be a podcaster maybe you're into 3d animation graphics or voiceover anything along those lines and you're somebody who is low drama great in a group uh supportive and wants to be around other like-minded individuals go to join.tdgr.tv and you're more than welcome to join my uh my little facebook group and i mean little right now we're about 140 because i've curated most of it but i'm opening it up because i think that we want more people to uh to be able to support each other so um, you're more than welcome to do that. And I appreciate your time, Chad. It's always wonderful being with you in, in San Diego. You and I are going to get into some definite trouble. we got to figure out how to do the airport thing you do with somebody. <laughs> I, I, I may actually have one lined up, but I can't talk okay. about it here publicly because, you know, shh, hush, hush. Um, guys, it's a great group. Um, it's it's some really uh, intense uh, live uh, streamers there. So uh, we definitely want to have you uh, go there. Uh, congrats to our winners. Um, and also, yes. guys, don't forget, go to our Facebook page. There is a link in the comments you can click, and there's a post with instructions uh, that will show you how you can get a set of the stickers, possibly uh, win a mug, get access to the uh, beta testing that's going on right now with the new live studio, which is what we're running this in, uh, so that you can multi-stream in ways that, well, it's going to blow your mind. Let me just tell you, it's going to blow your mind. Um, You'll get access to the uh, secret uh, private beta testing group that we have and a chance to win $2,500. So there's a, there's a whole lot you can do there. Jeff, one last question before we go. We can get so caught up in this. How do people, as they're doing this, avoid perfectionism? Oh, boy, you're, you're now talking, talking to me. We could go a whole other hour, but very quickly, <laughs> very quickly. Lee Love on the show that you guys saw that little clip of this photographer is a great friend of mine. I uh, said something at the very end of it. He said, you know, I'm older now. I'm, I'm not good on camera, but I have this message that I want to get out to people. He said, so I decided to embrace the mistakes and, and keep doing it and move forward. That's where your magic is going to happen. Don't worry about, I mean, a true mistake, like you've said something that's incorrect that needs to come out. That's a whole, that's what a mistake is. You thinking for a second that you think the world's thinking about. If you're not moving them with your words and they're paying attention to all this other stuff, then you need to go back and look at what you're trying to communicate to begin with. Do it. Uh, I, I love what uh, I love what my pastor says. Embrace the awkward and do it anyway. And that's how we get ahead. That's how we move forward in life. And, uh, you know, there's no promised land without the deep valleys. I always when people use that phrase, embrace the awkward, I can always tell when it's been used recently because I start getting lots of hugs. <laughs> Well, uh, you are the you are the poster boy. I've if you know if it can be done, I'm going to figure out how, and we're going to make it as awkward. I always tell people you don't have to be the best; just be memorable. Uh, that's right? right. That's right. So, and care about people. Mm, you know, really care huge. about people. You know, it's not. I hate it when we act like people are likes and follows and things and all that, and they're not. They, you know, a like is a head nod. It's not. You know, people selling their house to follow you <laughs> to your commune. You know, it's, it's just not what that is. Love people uh, and watch the world change. I love it. Jeff, thanks so much for hanging out here with us. Super, 
Super grateful for your time. Guys, next week, uh, you're going to want to tune in. Uh, pay attention. We're going to put some stuff here on the screen for you um, because we're going to be here at a special date and time because our guest is going to be joining us from Australia, um, the one and only a dear friend of mine, Justin Brown. Um, huge cool. YouTube channel, um, uh, close to a million uh, subscribers, uh, a tech guru who loves mobile um, and is going to be helping us uh, understand how to use some of the tech to make things just a little bit tighter and a little bit better. So you won't want to miss that. Again, Jeff, thank you. Guys, find the links, go and follow them, and make sure you join us next week when we learn together how to live better.